Today, we're gonna review the Troxxas Explorer fat tire e-bike. What makes this e-bike stand out in the pack is its relatively large 20 amp hour battery pack and it's relatively low price compared to the competition. So let's do a little show and tell. As I build it, I'll show you all the parts, then we'll take it outside for a test ride. We'll give it a full review and see what the Troxxas Explorer is made of. Ow. Okay, I quit. And we get a three amp charger, and of course, four inch wide knobby tires, and their name brand, Kenda, which is a good sign. And look at the size of these rotors. 203 millimeter, which is much larger than we typically see. Typically the maximum we see is 180 millimeters, and they are Tektro brand rotors. Another name brand component, good sign. Hopefully they're hydraulic. And look at this red paint. Definitely a bit nicer than what we typically see on a budget bike. Got a checker pattern, a light on the rear. Actually, two lights on the rear. Metal fenders, rear rack, wide saddle with a convenient quick adjust clamp. Oh no. Instructions, pedals, reflectors, grease, tools. Glad it was nothing breakable in that box. Shimano Acera derailleur, eight gears on the Shimano cassette, standard 750 watt buffeting motor. But as you may already know, 750 watts is just what that motor can accept. We'll have to see what the controller and battery are actually capable of sending to the motor. Troxus. Dude, seriously, look at that paint. This really shines. Of course, it's got the beautifully integrated battery, not one of those ugly externally mounted ones, which also saves room for a water bottle holder. I wonder what X-Pro integrated design means. And as you can see, this is the step through variation. There is also the high step variation if you want a little more frame integrity. These step throughs are actually awesome for getting on and off though. Let's take a look at this battery. Ooh, it's a big one. Definitely got some weight to it. 48 volt, 20 amp hour. That's about as big as they come. Got a little indicator light on there. Throw it on the charger. Tektro hydraulic brakes. So all around Tektro brakes with huge rotors. Should make for some excellent stopping power, but we'll have to try it out in a few. The website actually only lists 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. So what actually came on my bike is better than what's even advertised on the website. Suspension travel is not listed on the website, but don't worry, we have a tape measure. Four inches, 100 millimeters, that's about 20% more than our typical 80 millimeter travel. There's a simple open and lock adjustment on this fork. Haven't seen one like this before. does not come with a quick release lever on the front, which makes it a little bit more difficult to put the front wheel on and off, and also a little bit more difficult for a random person to come up and just take your wheel. Absolutely no rubbing of the brakes. That's not true for all bikes. And once again, it looks like a hurricane came through here. And done. So let's take a closer look at this thing. Handlebars have a rise to them, and they also sweep back just a little bit. It's got round rubber hand grips, eight speed Shimano shifter. Nice little dashboard operator here. Thumb throttle on the left. And the Tektro hydraulic disc brakes have nice levers. The calipers are also Tektro hydraulic, both on the front of the bike as well as the back of the bike. Same exact Tektro rotor on the rear. Also 203 millimeters on the rear. Giant rotors and excellent brakes on this bike. Troxxas saddle is wide, which makes for a comfortable saddle. Rear rack claims to support 55 pounds. Looks like there's some sort of way to uh, make an attachment on here. Maybe pannier bags. Some more mounting points on the front. Let's turn it on. It's got a bright and basic display. Try out the menus. So you get your miles, average mile per hour, max miles per hour, time, calories, and your power output. Always love to see power output on these things. And that's it. Pedal assist levels go from zero to five. There is a light switch. There's what it looks like. It's a lightweight and minimalist light. And it also turns on the dual lights on the rear of the bike. Let's see if they're brake lights. Yes, sir. Holding down the brake lever, they flash when you hold the brake 
nice little safety feature. And they are actually pretty bright, although this camera angle probably doesn't show that. All right, let's take the Troxxas Explorer out for a test ride. Got a little bit of gear on the rear rack. Always nice to have a rear rack on these bikes. Love how easy it is to get on these step through frames. Battery should be almost full. We'll start with the Strava so we can see our official range on this bike. Shows full, but it might not be totally full. Well, let's get out there and go. All right, going to do the 20% hill climb on the Troxxas Explorer. We're on Pal Assist 5. Pretty much full charge, thumb throttle only, ready, go. So let's see what kind of torque this thing has on its own. 600 watts, 500 watts. Uh, so this one's gonna need a bit of a rollout the way it's programmed. Um, it's not gonna give us full power off the line. So with a little bit of a rollout here, going about only four or five miles an hour, full throttle now has a chance for it to kick in all the power, 800 watts, 700 watts, 600 watts, 500 watts, 400 watts. So this one's not like the number one greatest hill climber. Let's try it one more time. So rolling into the hill at about five miles an hour, full throttle now, and it's giving us 900 watts, 900 watts, 900 watts, 800 watts, 700 watts. So a little bit of a rollout, it can make it up the hill just fine. Let's see if uh, throttle works on pedal says zero. So no, you need to put it on one, get a little bit of power going, and we'll try out the uh, pedal assist modes here now. Looks like it will give you up to 900 watts, even on pedal assist one, and bring you up to, up to about 20 under throttle only. Brakes are feeling excellent. The levers feel great in my hand. We're gonna try out the pedal assist modes. Uh, we're on pedal assist one, and it kicks in pretty gentle. Uh, gives us about 200 watts. It's topping out at 200 watts under pedal assist, bringing, uh, bringing us up to around 10 miles an hour. So this is actually a great uh, pedal assist one level. I've seen some of these bikes, like the slowest that I'll give you assistance on is like up to 15. So you can actually cruise at a reasonable pace on this one. I could see you getting a lot of range out of this. You know, if you're just cruising at a, at a slow cruising pace like this, let's go ahead and try pedal assist two. Let's see what kind of power it gives us up to 400 watts now. Uh, I'll try out some of the gears. So we're on top gear of eight already. This is a very common shifter here. This Shimano shifter is great. Uh, it's like my favorite style one where it has both the levers underneath. You can downshift more than one gear at a time and you can just click up through the gears very easily on the bottom side. Stopping at these stop signs for you guys. So let's see what pedal assist two brings us up to in terms of speed or where it holds us at. It'll bring you up to 15 miles per hour and then bump it up one more. Now you can go uh, 20 miles an hour. I don't, what kind of power did that give us? Let me bring it down a little bit. It gives us four, six, 600 watts. So 600 watts on pedal assist three. So I like how this is uh, laid out. And now pedal assist four, I'm guessing it'll be 800 watts. Let's see. Yeah, 800 watts. So pretty predictable. Comes in jumps of like 200 watts. And now this will bring me up to about 23. Let's bump it on pedal assist five now. And now it'll give us, peaks out at about 880. So 880 or 900 watts seems to be about the max output that this controller is gonna give us. And that brings us up to about 25. So even though this bike wasn't like super amazing at climbing the hill, one thing I actually like about its power delivery is it's not like, super abruptly jerky. Some of the bikes that are really good at climbing hills, like really steep hills, uh, they can be uh, pretty abrupt in like how that power delivery happens. Um, kind of like ride, driving a car around in like first gear, for example, it can be like really jerky. This kind of feels like more like you're in gear like three or four out of out of five. So this, this motor might be a little more uh, tailored to getting better performance at higher cruising speeds rather than super steep hill climbs. Come on, cars. All right, let's see, 900 watts of power output. Gears are good. Getting up to 27, 28.5. And then right around 29, it just, it cuts you off electronically and starts reducing how much power it's giving you. But it'll hold you right around 28, which is the maximum legal limit for a class three electric bike. So this is pretty much a by the book class three electric bike. The throttle will help you up to 20 miles per hour, which is legal. And then uh, pedaling, pedal assist up to 28 miles per hour, which is also the legal maximum limit on a 750 watt motor here in the States where I live. 
So this is a nice ride. I'm having fun out here. These fat tire e-bikes are always a blast. Uh, this one reminds me of another model that I really liked in many ways. Except this one's actually a lot cheaper than the other one I'm thinking of. Let's do a little lane split in here. You know what I'm telling you? Having a bicycle is everything around here. Who wants to be in LA traffic in a car? So this bike uh, feels very uh, nimble and nice for a fat tire e-bike for sure. Let's see how the pedal assist is from a stop on five. So it kicks in like right away and kind of eases onto it in the beginning, which is really nice because I've been on some of these like cheaper bikes where like it'll just abruptly give you all the power instantly. And uh, that can be for a pretty jarring ride. You really don't want all the power like from a stop because for example, like if, you're, if you just get a thousand watts, like as soon as you start pedaling. So this is nice. It, it ramps on the power in like a pretty linear way, but, but you do get up to 900 watts like relatively quickly. So I gotta say, man, this, this is a pretty awesome bike so far. Actually, the biggest thing about this bike that's impressive to me is the price that it's at for the size battery. And so far, you know, like uh, everything seems like pretty legit on this bike. Another really popular bike that's almost identical to this one, except it has a smaller battery, costs uh, more than what they have this listed for right now. So this one for me, um, I'm, I'm just really liking cruising on Pedal Assist 3 going 19 miles an hour so it's giving me like 400 watts it's a nice easy cruising pace and i mean with this big battery you could probably get some pretty serious range out of this one riding position on this is nice the riser handlebars and they're uh just swept back just a little bit so it's not you know like your really super laid back cruiser you can still like ride this one like an actual you know like mountain bike i guess you could say but it is a comfortable riding position rolling into this uh, little hill here. Pedal says 320 miles an hour. Let's see what kind of power it gives us to get up this hill. Yeah, right around 600 watts, still holding us at 19-ish miles an hour. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty decent hill climber. I just realized I totally forgot to do my zero to 20 speed because I was busy having fun lane splitting and uh, skip my normal spot. Do a speedometer in my right hand. I weigh 200 pounds, throttle only, ready, go. So it eases on that power, five, 10, 15, 20. So respectably quick, powerful bike for sure. Is the speedometer accurate? Yeah, I'd say so. They're, uh, the GPS will lag just a little bit because it is GPS, but yeah, they're both showing basically the exact same speed. Still a little bit of riding over here by the Venice Canals. Have you guys seen these before? See how it does on some more nimble kind of riding stuff. Yeah, I mean, this thing actually feels pretty nimble and it doesn't really jerky around too much. Uh, you can always crank down the pedal assist and it'll go easier on you for sure. Hello. Hi. I was just trying to squeeze through. Oh. It's not, it's not legal. There's signs everywhere. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right, I'll get out of here. So I'll crank it up to pedal assist five here. Be respectful of the neighbors and see about this little hill climb here. Throttle, go. Oh yeah. No problem. Not pedaling, pedaling, power. Not pedaling, pedaling, power. Not pedaling, pedaling, power. So pretty much no lag to speak of really. Uh, instant, very great cadence sensor on this bike. It's uh, all around really about all you could ask for from a cadence sensor, honestly. Sometimes these cadence sensors can have like really bad lag. Um, and sometimes they're just like way too abrupt and jerky. This one's a pretty good one. So let's get out here, have some fun. Uh, we'll see what the range is like and try another long steep hill here in a little bit. We'll definitely test these brakes out, still bedding them in, but they feel really nice so far. These are probably gonna be the most powerful brakes I've tried on any of these fat tire cruisers so far. I mean, they just have all the ingredients. They're hydraulic, they have massive rotors, they're name brand Tektro. 
give it a go at a little bit of off-road riding here. So it does have that front suspension. It can either lock or unlock. I just ride with it unlocked all the time for more comfort. Um, yeah, it's pretty typical riding conditions. You know, it has these uh, fat tire, knobby tires. They can get you through the sand and through these trails. Uh, definitely has enough power to power you on through the loose sand and, you know, probably best riding on pavement but it's one of these bikes that can do anything all right we'll throw this on pedal assist five and try out this hill well rolling start at about eight miles an hour pop down a few gears and i mean this is a pretty steep hill and i don't even think i need to be helping it yeah i can do this hill under just throttle and here is the hill we just climbed We've been out here for about 42 minutes, eight miles, 8.1 miles into this ride. Just now showing four out of five bars. And now might be a good time to show you the different seat height. So this thing actually drops like way down. You know, somebody definitely very short could fit this bike. I'm six foot five. Um, I have not been riding with this uh, saddle on the max height, but let me just try it on the max. And on max height, it comes up just below the handlebars. See how that feels for somebody with an inseam of 34 oh yeah so this actually feels like the right pedal stroke for me um, i'm getting about the the proper leg extension now i like to ride with the seat a little bit lower for better filming angle but yeah this this feels good for somebody six foot five now so right now as i'm riding this thing uh how i feel about it is this bike seems like a great value honestly with this 20 amp hour battery and these massive brakes on here uh and this thing and this thing just rides nice it feels solid um it just seems like a really good bike honestly you know when it showed up in the mail i didn't really know what to think of it you know i just thought it was gonna be another run-of-the-mill bike then i saw the brake rotors and uh they're hydraulic and that was kind of a surprise to see such big rotors on a bike. I haven't seen that so far. So check it out. There's the California incline right up there. We're gonna go right up that long gradual incline and see how the Troxxas Explorer explores that hill. Okay, we'll bump it on to pedal assist five, bump it down a couple gears and going into the little loopy loop here. Gear shifting has been flawless on this bike. So yeah, this it just feels so nice, uh, giving me a nice little level of 900 watts, little level of power going over the bridge here. That was cake. And then we'll go ahead and stop here. Pulse is five. We'll do uh, throttle only on the California incline. Ready, go. Ramping on power, 400 watts, 500 watts. Oh, I don't know why I was pedaling. I wasn't really helping it. Uh, yeah, 800 watts, 900 watts, so long, gradual incline. Obviously at this point we can tell it'll just pull us on up this hill and we're gonna hit max speed here at some point. Uh, just motor is putting out 900 watts. Actually, it's, it's dropping down now because we're hitting close to the speed limit. 18 miles an hour, pushing out 820 watts. Still 800 watts, holding us at 18 miles an hour. So it can output that uh, peak power for quite a while there. So here's the hill we just climbed. You can see the mountains off in the distance and we were just down there on the bike path. So pretty decent little climb. And another thing I should really point out about that climb was it's still showing four out of five bars. So there's like no voltage sag. And that was a pretty hard pull from the battery. It was asking a lot from the motor and the controller there to, to be able to pull that off. I'm gonna bed the brakes in a little bit here. Holy crap, these things aren't even like bedded in, but I mean, <laughs> this is going downhill and this thing is like, wow. All right, dude, it's time to do a brake test for up 20. Just holding down the throttle here. We'll do full brake. Ready, a little bit scared. Ready, now. Oh my goodness, these brakes are the best brakes I've tried on any fat tire cruiser. Any fat tire, you know, one of these one, $1,000 to $2,000 two piston hydraulic disc brakes. All right, one more brake test for a 20. 
Get it up to speed here. 20. Break. Yeah, super, super good brakes. And also those giant rotors, they're gonna be able to dissipate heat better, uh, like for long downhills. Just the bigger rotor, it gives you more surface area and you'll be able to dissipate more heat and not have to worry about brake fade if you're gonna be going down some big descents or something like that. One thing about having big rotors like this on a bike is you can just kind of like repeat, repeatedly do these uh, brake tests over and over and you won't overheat your brakes. So about 53 minutes into this ride, 10.5 miles, still showing four out of five battery bars. As expected, I mean, 20 amp hours, that's the big boy. Right, we got the fat tires, we got the gears, we got the motor. Let's see if we can do this hill. This, this is gonna be a bit of a challenge. Oh yeah, oh man, gotta love it. All right guys, just making it back into the neighborhood. Let me give you my final thoughts on the Troxxas Explorer. So we were out there today for one hour and 25 minutes, did basically 18 miles according to my Strava. We are showing three out of five bars remaining on the Troxxas. Now based on my experience with a giant 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery, I'd say you could probably do at least 40 miles of range on this the way I ride. And I weigh 200 pounds and I like to ride fast. Now I don't know what the official numbers are for that. You could probably definitely do more than 40 miles on this bike. It really just depends on how much you weigh and how hard you're riding it. In general, a 20 amp hour battery pack is about as big as they come on these fat tire cruisers. So if you're looking for big range, this is a good option. The power and hill climbing ability of the Troxxas Explorer is pretty typical and normal for a 750 watt fat tire cruiser. But one of the most impressive things about this bike in particular is the brakes. I know, I already said it quite a few times, but these rotors are just massive and all of the bike components are Tektro. So it just makes for really nice all around performance in terms of accelerating and also bringing all of that power and weight down to a stop which is really important on a heavy bike like this. And looking at the company website right now, this bike is on sale for $13.79. And compared to other bikes I've reviewed, the battery size and brakes and overall package that's being offered for $13.79, I mean, truly, that's a pretty darn good value. I can think of quite a few bikes I've reviewed on this channel that they're charging more and offering less. So that's my two cents on this bike. If you wanna grab one, you can use the discount link below this video in the description box. And of course, if you did use that link, it would help support this channel and I would greatly appreciate your support. However, if this is not the bike for you, you can watch this video here next. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment, and I'll catch you in my next one.